What's up, guys? So tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m., uh, we should be getting our CPI data. Until we get that data, however, uh, this video is basically going to be a bit of a crapshoot. So I'm going to give you guys what I think uh, would be the next steps for a bearish move on the overall stock market, on the SPY, the NASDAQ, the IWM, and the crypto market. So I'm going to make this very nice, short, and sweet, simple. Without further ado, let's get started with the video. So let's just have a feel for what was happening in the market. So we gapped up substantially from yesterday. The market was very green in the, in the morning. What ended up happening was that was basically just a sell-off. We, we continued moving up for a little bit, and then we completely eradicated yesterday's lows, made new lows, and then closed slightly green. So any sort of upward momentum that we would have had uh, was gone. So clearly, like if we were going to maintain upward momentum, we would have had to maintain at least 50% of yesterday's candle. But the fact that we retraced the entire candle from yesterday um, broke, down from, broke down to new lows and then closed a bit green, that is not a continuation of momentum to the upside. Um, so, which means that the overall open was just a beautiful opportunity to just sell and get poor puts. And at the moment, this was basically the case for every single indice. So this is the NASDAQ. Uh, this is the IWM vomited even lower than uh, the SPY and the, uh, the NASDAQ. But overall, none of the stocks could maintain their upward momentum. And uh, so let's just zoom out. Think about what's going to happen here. If CPI data is very, very bearish, the market is just going to continue falling so much lower. And just because everyone is majority bearish at the moment doesn't necessarily mean that the market is going to bounce. We need to see tangible things in um, the put to call ratio, things like that, that would cause a explosion to the upside. But at the moment, that we don't really see that. We just see a lot of stocks at their historic lows in terms of velocity to the downside, the breadth, um, stocks you know at lows in terms of like a majority of stocks at lows in terms of how far away they are from the 200 moving average. Lots of different stats like that, but there's no justification for a huge bounce upwards just yet. So one of the things is, was the CPI data uh, priced in at this point? Maybe that could be the case, but you know, that's possible because just thinking about it, the SPY hit 395 today. We hit a low of 394.82. We were talking about the SPY hitting 390 to 395 up here, and it, it didn't really register how fast that could have happened. Uh, we are so used to having uh, bounces of, you know, bouncing upwards to levels of resistance before we just capitulate down. But that happened very, very quickly. And that was it basically caught everyone off guard, didn't really not necessarily caught everyone off guard, but it didn't really register like, holy crap. Like the spy is trading at 395 right now. That didn't really, I don't think that really hit people just yet. So with uh, negative CPI data, 395 is going to be broken down. And then we're going to easily see 387 to 390. That is going to be this 1.618% FIB. Um, and 390 as a nice psychological level are going to be the next lower levels of resistance or support. What we would need to look at is how we respond at that level. Would we get a bounce? And it's justifiable that we should be getting a bounce somewhere between 387 to 390. But again, there's no absolute reason. So even today, intraday, 405 was a major level of resistance. And that's what I was saying yesterday's video, that 405 is going to be the pivot point for an upward move continued moving forward. Not 400, 405. So even if, you know, we get proper CPI data, um, 405 needs to be broken above. Unless we break above 405 and hold, 405 is going to continue being an amazing opportunity to go short. And um, that was the case for today. We were at 405, beautiful level of resistance, buying shorts, boom, we ended up falling lower. So that is going to be, the, if we get proper bullish CPI data somehow tomorrow, 405 is going to be the main level of uh, resistance on the SPY. So the NASDAQ, we didn't break new lows on the NASDAQ. We held 
all the lows, and we ended up closing uh, over 1% green. So the NASDAQ showed the most strength uh, today compared to the SPY and the IWM. And what we can see is the RSI very sensitive to a small upward move, which is telling me that there is a lot more room to the downside. What we want to see for a bullish upward move is we want to see the RSI not shoot up like this, shoot up more than two points on a baby move like this. This is not a healthy thing because it, it's just too sensitive. And it's basically showing me that technically there's a lot more room to the downside. So yes, we held 300 today, but yesterday we were at 295. So easily we can hit 290 once more on the NASDAQ. Very quick, you know, things don't really look overall that amazing um, for the stock market. But once again, it all depends on the CPI data tomorrow morning. On the IWM, obviously, we overextended to the downside much more. And the RSI still could not become oversold. The RSI is still not below 30, but we're making new lows. So that is garbage. That is really, 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 really bearish. Um, you can see how the RSI here is just flat. Even though we made new lows, this was a very bearish close, but it's flat here. So if a move like this is causing the RSI to be flat, imagine how much lower we would need to be for us to break below 30, for us to break below 28, a lot more lower. So this is not bullish on the IWM. And in my opinion, because the IWM is looking this garbage, the SPY is also going to take a hit more so than the NASDAQ. Uh, if the CPI data is bearish. So just keep that in mind. This is really, really overall, the technicals on the entire stock market look pretty bad. Uh, let's take a quick look at Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin trade worked out really well. I was showing how we opened very far away outside of the lower uh, Bollinger Band and how to, because we were that overextended, it would be a good sign that the market could bounce into the morning and that's exactly what happened the overall markets had a green open because bitcoin uh had basically it was very overextended to the downside and we found a bottom on bitcoin so exactly what happened i was saying hey you know we should at least see 31.7 um which would be the lower level of the bollinger band that's exactly what happened it worked out really well we ended up overshooting to 32.6 but now we can clearly see that we're still trading outside of the lower standard deviation. And again, you know, the, the trade works out really well. When you're opening outside of the lower Bollinger Band on large indices or on Bitcoin, as we just saw, the trade works out. And it did uh, work out pretty well. So now we need to see how it closes because we can see the Bollinger Band on Bitcoin is falling rapidly. And if we can. If we close outside or over here, maybe below 31.5, uh, the Bollinger Band could end up still being, uh, we could end up still opening within the Bollinger Band, depending on how fast the Bollinger Band ends up falling. So just keep that in mind. Overall, this is a very weird teetering position for the entire stock market or the entire crypto market. Uh, are we just going to continue falling lower? Are we going to get a relief bounce? And to get a relief bounce, we would need to break above 405 on the SPY. We would need to break above, um, you know, we would need to um, break above 32.5, 32.6 on Bitcoin for continuation upwards. And after 405 on the SPY, then 410 and 415 are going to be the main levels. But it all depends on the CPI data. But even with the CPI data, that's not necessary. It doesn't justify a continuation of the bullish trend. So overall, even if CPI data is bullish, in my opinion, um, still, if we have a huge bounce, those are just going to be good shorting opportunities, in my opinion. Uh, there's still a lot of things that are still wrong and still need to be addressed and fixed in the economy, um, especially with credit, especially with the yields, especially with bonds, there are a lot better uh, appealing trades to take at the moment than equities. That is one of the issues that um, stock investors are facing at the moment. So take all of these things into consideration. Uh, I hope I helped. So 
I also am very appreciative and I'm very grateful and thankful that all of you guys like, comment, subscribe. Uh, the videos, I really, really appreciate it. I hope I helped. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.